some people that are interested a rundown on some of the improvements and repairs I've had to make since I bought this McGregor 26S um, a year ago. We'll start with the bow. The bow had one of those black rubber strips on it which we thought was just protecting the boat but it was actually hiding uh, some damage. The bow eye had been ripped out and replaced with a lag screw so I had to um, First I had to do some fiberglass repair here. I still need to do a little sanding right there. Just now pulled the plastic off from the very last bit of repair. It takes a lot of different layers of um, gel coat. But to replace this bow eye, I, the holes were still there from the outside, but the inside was a little bit harder. Of course I took everything out of this whole area, the whole rebirth. And then, it's kind of dark in there, but um, I had to make this access hatch. And it turns out the bow eye is actually about as high as I could reach inside there. And this part, this hatch here isn't watertight or anything, so I just glued the thing in place. Now, once I got done working in there, just glued this circle in with a little bit of construction adhesive. Anyway, the bow eye was not that difficult once I cut that access point. One of the worst parts was the cleanup. All the styrofoam bits that, that the McGregor company used to make the boat float in the event that it fills with water. Anytime you work in any of those compartments, like that area in the ceiling up there, or in here, or if, I don't think I'll ever work in those areas, but in those areas back there, uh, there's just there's styrofoam. There's probably some in those bumps right there too, and it just gets everywhere. So you've got to vacuum it up. But you know it's really kind of satisfying to use a shop vac to uh, suck up styrofoam bits. So let's let's go through some of the interior mods and improvements. Um, of course, it came with a circuit panel that looked just like this. Uh, this is just a new one. Um, I put a negative bus there, and uh, I found my light. Um, the battery is still in the factory location back there. It's tied in with a piece of rope. So I fixed, while well, we're down here, but we'll just, just stick with electrical for now. Uh, there's the old circuit panel. It's still there because it's being used to mark where some of the wires went. But I ran a new wire hard to see back there. Ran a new wire up there behind here up into here. I ran two wires while I was at it and I also put like a piece of pipe that will let me pull another wire through because the pipe's got a string inside it so if I ever need more wires. But right now I'm using the existing factory wire for the anchor light and my new wire goes up here and it just powers um, this stuff. That switch is dead. So I've got a voltmeter which you can see my voltage isn't very good. It's less than 12. USB power supply and then back here there's a cigarette lighter adapter which I'm using to keep the VHF charged. One thing that's neat on the boat that I've put on here is some of these USB powered fans. They have very low amp draw and they're very quiet. But sometimes at night when you're asleep all you need is just a little breeze to keep you cool. But I've also got this trucker's fan that I put in here when I first started working on the boat. It blows a little harder. It used to go back and forth, but then I grabbed it and turned it one day, and then it never moved again. So I've got another one of those USB fans over here, and that's that's my bed. So that's very important to have a cool spot for the captain to sleep. I also have some extra padding underneath the berth for me. So while I'm down here, I replaced these covers because the old ones were falling apart and gross. And this one actually has a hardware to be a table but I don't know if I'll ever actually use it as a table because I use this cooler as a table. And the cooler is tied in with a rope that I threw a hole that I, some holes I drilled. So it doesn't move around too much. And it's a convenient place to use this little table inside. I'm sorry I'm all over the place. I didn't really write a script for this. So let's talk about the galley. I've got this little quick to cook stove here. Haven't used it yet, but I think it's going to work great as long as we're at anchor or at a dock. It's not. I'm not going to be cooking while sailing with that. For that, 
I'm not on board right now. I have a swinging stove where the propane tank hangs underneath it. And it actually mounts on this homemade mount that I made out here. You can't buy those mounts anymore because that stove isn't made. So I made one because I didn't want to rob the whole mount off my other boat. So we got a place to cook. The boat came with this cool um, camping cook set that's all kinds of nesting plates that comes in there. And I, I've used those a few times. They've worked great. <clears throat> but we bought this set of wheat straw plates, cups, bowls. All this stuff was like $16 from Amazon. Place settings for six. And there's even bigger plates, but we can't fit them on the boat. So um, they're all made from wheat straw. So if you did drop one overboard, it would eventually, someday, biodegrade. And so that's kind of nice. And they also, they work really well. They, they're very, they have a real good feel to them when you're, when you're using them. And then how do we wash our dishes? Well, it's a little hard with one sink, but it can be done. So this boat came with this exact, this is the factory nozzle, but I replaced the switch with a light up switch. I was afraid without a light, I might forget and accidentally leave the water running, but listen to that. You're never, never gonna forget and leave that water running. Okay, it's, it's really loud. And down here you can see the pump. I uh, screwed, well I glued a piece of plastic uh, wall tiling to the inside there and I had pre-drilled it so I could screw the pump mount to it So it's nicely nice and secure there, and I didn't have to make any new holes in the boat And of course, you know This is convenient because you can brush your teeth and stuff. You may wonder where that water comes from Well, let's go see Of course, anytime you're inside a sailboat that's not sailing, there's sails stored everywhere. That's the way it is. So I've got this uh, Aquatainer here. And I made an adapter just to connect the hose to the Aquatainer. Uh, and I can put two, maybe three of them up here. They're kind of seat belted in with these old life jacket straps that came with the boat. It's also where, for right now, I store my extra anchor. And I have this um, raised flooring stuff here. Um, I bought it online. I can't remember the name of the store, but it just kind of keeps things off the floor and protects the floor a little bit and lets any kind of moisture uh, drain or evaporate out. These weird uh, hinged doors were here when I bought the boat, but I don't think they're factory original. I think a previous owner added them. So while we're up here, see these cushions that look almost like they're new? Well, they looked almost like they belonged in the trash when I got the boat. In fact, the previous owner gave me a discount because when he went and saw what bad condition the cushions were in. And it took some work. I took the foam out of them and I soaked it in bleach water. Like I let it soak up the bleach water like it was a sponge. And they were so heavy. But then I squeezed it, all the bleach water out. It was like 10% bleach. And I hung them up in my greenhouse for about two weeks. And in there, they, they never they were hot all the time in the sun. They, they eventually dried out. And then I ran these covers through the laundry about four times. And uh, there's still some stains, but they smell clean, they feel clean, and they're just, you can tell the foam's a little worn out. They're not quite as resilient as I'd like, but yeah, new cushions are expensive, and we only spend a few nights a year on the boat, so I'm not going to spend a lot of money on it right now. Uh, while I'm up here, I decided I did not need a head on this boat. Didn't need a dedicated room. I decided what I did need was more space. The whole family, there's six of us. The whole family has these duffel bags and uh, <clears throat> personal effects. So I built this handy shelf. This is actually cedar from our old um, the kids' sandbox. And then these are some cedar strips too from the sandbox. And just built this little shelf and I put some hooks up there. So actually, if you count them, there's six hooks for six different people's backpacks or duffel bags. So you can come up here. I've even got a makeshift curtain that you can use clothespins to attach so you can have privacy. <clears throat> you can come up here and uh, the dirty laundry spot is back there. I'm gonna, I have a folding basket that's not in there right now. You can get to your clothes, whatever, your, your, your hairbrush, whatever you need, <clears throat> and you can look through your suitcase because there's a light um, kind of wired from that wire I told you about that went up above. I got two of them up here. They can be a night light or a regular white light, or they can be off. But you can dig through your stuff, <clears throat> get what you want up here without having duffel bags and, and uh, backpacks all over the entire 